Welcome everyone to the Quarantine Film Series. I am your host, Kavir Segel. It's great to be coming to you live from the ATL, Atlanta, Georgia. We have a special guest on the show today who has a strong connection to Georgia. So I'm wearing my Georgia shirt for him. Dressing up for him. See? Dressed to impress. I like to impress my guests. All right. So this is obviously the Quarantine Series. We've done so many episodes, over 150 episodes now. And this is a platform for artists of all stripes and types to uh, share their projects with us, filmmakers, musicians, authors. And I think it's important to be there, not just for the artists you find on this broadcast, obviously support their projects, check out their films, listen to their music, check out the artists in your community. There always has to be, I think, a link between, a symbiotic link between artists and audiences. So if you can, Support the artists in your local community. All right. If you want to find out who will be on the broadcast, you can always subscribe to my social media. I'm available on all platforms. So you can be the first to know or the second to know about who and the when and the why and the how will be on the broadcast. Secondly, let us know where you're watching from. I'm in ATL. I think we have LA in the house um, today. And Special hat tip to the fans and the community out in Kuala Lumpur who likes to tune in. Love the crowd out in Malaysia, KL. Also to the folks in Johannesburg, Berlin, Prussia. Still like a country, but people watch from that region. It's true. Big shout out to the Prussians. Um, if you want to ask a question, drop it in the comment field. Try to opine your question, no matter if you're watching live or watching on the rebroadcast. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know your questions. All right. Now for the best part of the show, you get to meet the remarkable artist. And this artist truly is remarkable. I feel an instant connection with him because, you know, he went to school in Atlanta, Emory graduate, and he's working on, yeah, he's worked on, he's probably continuing to work on, <laughs> these films are never ending, right? Um, a recent project, a uh, recent film based on uh, John Lewis, uh, Good Trouble is the, is the name of the film. Um, obviously a film on the civil rights luminary and legend who has um, created just an, an incredible legacy. I'm talking both of John Lewis and of Ben Arnon. Ben is the um, founder, co-founder of his media studio, Color Farm Media. And he's getting just rave reviews for his incredible uh, film as part of the Tribeca Film Festival, selected for the Tribeca Film Festival. And Ben is also an investor, advisor, and all around mensch. Um, all around maestro. So please welcome to the show the wonderful, remarkable, highly talented and acclaimed Ben Arnon. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great to see you today. Of course, of course. Likewise. So tell me first, uh, Ben, how has the uh, quarantine impacted you? How did it impact the film? Uh, the quarantine has been quite interesting for everyone, right? Um, it, uh, it certainly impacted the film. Um, I think for me personally, uh, I'm certainly someone who uh, likes to be you know, out and about and moving around and interacting with people. So that's been a big, a big change, um, really just keeping it um, very much you know, indoors and not really, not really testing anything with respect to, to COVID. For the film, uh, it had a pretty major impact. We were supposed to, as you mentioned, we were supposed to premiere at Tribeca, the film festival in April. We were supposed to have some uh, big events in Atlanta and in DC and in New York, uh, and then release the film in theaters on May 1st, and none of that happened because of because of COVID. So we um, we pivoted and we ended up doing mostly an online, uh, you know, TVOD, what's called transactional video on demand rentals um, type of release. Uh, but there actually turned out to be some real positives in that. You know, for instance, typically a film like ours that's trying to have a real social impact. Um, you work with a lot of nonprofits. You work with a lot of companies, and 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 you um, arrange for them to to have what's called theater buyouts. They might buy out a theater and have all their employees see the film, and then their employees can have conversation driven by the film. Like the film would be used to catalyze, in our case, conversations around racial equity, around voting rights, around leadership. But those those screenings are typically limited by the size of those theaters: two hundred fifty seats, five hundred seats. But now we went virtual, so there were no limitations. So we had some companies that bought, um, that, 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 that did employee screenings for 65,000 employees. So it was actually a pretty remarkable thing. And we were able to actually, I think maybe engage 
um, more people because of the virtual aspect of things. And so, um, you know, I think that's been really interesting to see. Also, folks like yourself who are doing these, you know, incredible video series. Uh, you mentioned that you're 150 episodes in. Um, like this stuff wasn't happening as much before COVID. So, uh, you know, I try to, I'm, I'm a real optimist. I try to see things, you know, optimistically. And so I've been thinking a lot about some of the, um, some of the changes in behavior that, that I think are, are probably going to stick with us uh, even after the pandemic. Yeah, I sure hope so. It's nice to be able to, to look at the glass half full and, and congratulations on the pivot and, and making a success out of the release. It's really speaks to your, your knack and skills as, as a producer. Um, I want to just, um, ask also your daily ritual, your daily habits. How do you spend your typical days? Do you wake yeah. up at the same time? Um, how do you make sure it's not like Groundhog Day? <laughs> right, it kind of is Groundhog Day, actually. Um, I, you know, I, I try to, I do try to wake up um, fairly early, and uh, my days are, are probably similar to a lot of people right now. I'm, I'm having a lot of Zoom calls. Um, you know, doing just, just. My my main goal right now is to make sure that I come out on the other side of the pandemic feeling like I accomplished something, like it wasn't months that kind of were set back. And so, um, you know, the reality in, in our business, um, production has been uh, considerably hampered. I mean, con con production was pretty much completely um, shut down for the last six months, but development is still happening. So we, you know, writers are still writing, animators are still animating. So we've kind of doubled triple down really on um, projects that we've been in development on and just trying to just trying to make progress on those. So, you know, days are pretty much, you know, lots and lots of phone calls and mostly Zoom calls. And I try to get out and get some sun and, um, you know, take take a walk and, and, you know, connect with people any way I can. I hear you. I'm glad you're connected with me. Glad you're connected yeah. with your audience. Tell me, um, tell me about how this project, John Lewis, Good Trouble came to you? Yeah, so my company is called Color Farm Media. My co-founder is named Erica Alexander. Uh, she's best known for her acting um, roles like Maxine Shaw on Living Single or um, uh, the, the movie Get Out. She was Detective LaToya and a whole bunch of other uh, roles on film and TV. Um, and so as a result of, of you know, that side of, of who she is, She's been a, a surrogate um, for many years for um, the Hillary Clinton campaign. And I was actually a delegate for the Barack Obama campaign in 2008. We met at the DNC convention in 2008. And um, as a result of her surrogate work, she had actually campaigned in Atlanta with John Lewis, also with Stacey Abrams, with Ayanna Presley. And so John Lewis's office in Atlanta, they knew that she and I had started a production company. This is early 2018. They reached out to us and said that there was a documentary film that they had that, that had been in the works for some time. Maybe we could help out. And so we got involved. The first step that we took was to bring on a director. And our first choice was Dawn Porter. When we reached out to Dawn, she actually stopped us at the beginning of the call and said, you know, I have not looked at the deck that you shared with me because I have to tell you, I have my own John Lewis film I'm doing right now. And but within about 10 seconds, fortunately, we all sort of instead of thinking these are going to be competitive projects, we all thought maybe maybe this could make a lot of sense for us to join forces and collaborate. And so we did that. We joined forces with Dawn Porter and her producing partner, Laura Michael Chisholm. And the rest is history. It, it was it was great. Um, in 2018, in the fall, we started filming. Uh, there was a need to start filming because John Lewis was campaigning with Stacey Abrams and Beto O'Rourke and Lucy McBath and all these you know, people running for Congress and other in other positions. So we got out there, we started filming. Um, CNN Films was on board from uh, literally day one. Uh, we were able to raise um, a very generous grant from a donor in Atlanta, actually. And um, and then we and then we took it from there. And it was it was just a, it was really the honor of a lifetime to, um, to to produce this film. And as you mentioned, I do have a, a, a connection to Atlanta. I went to college in Atlanta. So I love Atlanta. I love being in Atlanta. And um, so this film was, was nice because we, we got to be there quite a bit. Uh, and balance the archival because there's so much of his life is, you know, his legacy is forged in the 60s and the crucible of the civil rights anthem. But he's had such a, a rich post civil rights uh, and you know, as, as a congressman. How did he, and he just mentioned filming um, the 2018 campaign. So yeah. how did he balance, like, how, how was it chronological? I mean, I've seen the film, but how did he balance? what areas of his life to focus on. Um, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, you know, that, that was obviously largely, um, you know, Dawn's creative choices. But, you know, the, the key that we wanted to do was to bridge the work that he was doing as a, as a young student activist with SNCC and crossing the bridge in Selma, all, bridge all of that to, to today and actually bridge the work he did as an outsider, as an activist outside of the sort of establishment or Congress and bridge that with the work that he was doing within Congress. And so that was really critical. We, we wanted to do that by showing a couple of things. Number one, that uh, he was always a strategist. You know, he's, he's often hailed as being brave and courageous, which of course he was and all the civil rights leaders were, but, um, but it wasn't just bravery. It was, there was a lot of strategy and a lot of intelligence, and a lot of planning, a lot of, you know, uh, uh, you know all of, all of these um, people came together and really spent a lot of time, you know, organizing and doing that hard work and so, and, and that's what he continued to do within Congress as well. Um, it, that's why we showed the scene where he's, you know, wakes up, you know, every day he woke up early and he read the papers and, and he was getting prepared for the day. He was strategizing about the day politically, about, about relationships he needed to strengthen that day of how he was going to do that. And so, um, so those were all really, really important um, elements that we wanted to show. And we wanted to bridge him, you know, his work doing that from the 1960s all the way through to uh you know to 2018 and 19. you know the tragic um the tragedy of, of his passing and it feels like a, a, a seminal loss for our, not just atlanta but for the entire country and the world how yeah. has his passing um affected or how has it made the film even more poignant and what's the re what's been the response post his passing about the film the response has been amazing uh fortunately first of all he was he was alive for the first two weeks of of the release, which we felt very fortunate. When when he was diagnosed in December, um, you know everyone knew that that diagnosis is a really tough one. It's it's a very low percentage of people that live past say six months with with pancreatic stage four cancer, um, and so the film was supposed to be released May first, and when it got bumped back to July third, um, you know I think it probably crossed everyone's mind. Like you know I, I we hope he's still going to be around, and he was, and he got to enjoy the enthusiasm and the excitement of that opening weekend. He he thoroughly enjoyed it and um and felt all of it. And, you know, I think that uh the film not I mean, we could never we always knew we wanted the film to be released uh during the summer of 2020 because we obviously knew that that there was an election, right? We knew that that there was a presidential election. But we we never could have predicted a pandemic, a global pandemic, and and the in the most significant racial equity protests that have taken place in the United States since he was on that bridge in Selma. So all of those things combined and, you know, John Lewis going to Black Lives Matter Plaza um, and, and really, you know, realized knowing that he was, you know, quite ill at that time, you know, all of these things I think created a real heightened um, meaning to the film for people. I think that's one of the reasons that we uh, were able to, um, you know, we, we, we had so many organizations, whether they were companies or nonprofits or other organizations that really wanted to share the film with a lot of their employees and with um, with others, because it's a great it's a great tool that is that that's able to be used to catalyze meaningful conversation around racial equity, around leadership, around uh, voting rights. And so, you know, those are conversations that people want to be having. And, um, you know, the film really, I think, helped a lot of uh, a lot of people and organizations to be able to sort of lean into those conversations during the summer. So we're really proud of that. Uh, and, I, and I think it's had really significant impact. What do you think John, Leg John Lewis's legacy you think will be five, 10, 20 years from now? Uh, I think a couple of things. I think number one, um, it'll, it'll center around voting rights and it'll center around the struggle uh, to achieve, you know, equal voting rights for everyone. And, and um, and and hopefully put an end to all the voter suppression that we're seeing out there. But I think his legacy will also be sig uh, significant uh, for the duration which he was able to continue his fight. I think it's it's one thing to 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 take up a cause and stay with it for you know a few months, for a few years, maybe a decade. To do it for sixty plus years uh, is very rare and. So I think that you know he he really inspires a lot of people to um, you know it's very easy to to get down. I mean you know especially this year it's very easy to to feel like like we're moving backwards and like like things 
you know, before say 2013, when the Voting Rights Act really got gutted, um, before you know the election of 2016, you know, it, it, we may feel like we've kind of gone backwards in a lot of different respects. And so John Lewis's legacy is is that you know this is a marathon, and you know you need to um, you need you need to remain optimistic and hopeful. And and one of the ways that he was able to do that was always kind of forming that bridge with a younger generation. Um, I think that's really why he went to Black Lives Matter Plaza. It was almost a passing of the torch and a kind of recognition of, of you know, I, I, I recognize a, a new generation and want to sort of pass the torch. But, um, you know, that, that, that ability to, um, to, to, to keep fighting for decade after decade after decade, I think is, is, the, is the true, um, you know, is, 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 is really the true power of his legacy. Yeah, well said, well said. And um, I like that you have the, the film poster behind you. If we can yeah. put that up on the screen too. This poster is what, from when, um, is that the the famous jacket and the backpack and we yeah. hear about? Yeah, what? yeah, that, that's when, when he was arrested. Um, and yeah, the designer who, who designed it just did a great job. Um, someone today told me they felt like it was iconic. I love seeing it when, when it shows up on, you know, Amazon or iTunes or just looking at the movie poster. Um, you know, I, I, I love it. You know, he's got that kind of little smirk on his face and, um, you know, he was arrested 45 times. This is, this is one of, this is one of his very famous arrest photos. And, uh, you know, I think that the designer was able to sort of, um, use it very subversively and, 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 um, you know, make it into a really powerful image. What's your suggestion of, um, I know the elections in a few weeks, um, of getting into good trouble, um, around a, a voting rights. How, how do we get into good trouble around voting rights? Well, the first thing everyone has to do is vote. Make sure you know you register to vote that that you know you vote and just you know handle your business that way. And then you know I love this I love this concept of the voting squad from when we all vote. Uh, our our film had a social impact campaign. Um, actually, it's still going. MakeGoodTrouble.com, and it's a really phenomenal campaign. We partnered with a lot of great organizations like When We All Vote, like Fair Fight, like Black Voters Matter, uh, Vote Riders. Um, you know, another, another thing is get involved with those kind of organizations. I mean, you know, it's really important that we keep pushing beyond election day. Um, you know, in the past, there's been a tendency to sort of have all this organ organizing and activism and mobilizing happening for election day. And then, and then that day comes and then it just all vanishes. And so it's important to keep, to keep pushing, but, but, you know, people, everyone's busy, so you don't have to you don't have to create something of your own. I mean, if, if that's if that's your thing and you have the capability in the in the space, do it. But um, but there are great organizations and you can get involved with you know organizations like When We All Vote or, or Fair Fight, and um, you know just 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 stay just stay consistent, remain consistent. Of course, also um, you know speak speak up and speak out, like John Lewis would say. I mean, if if you see something that's that's not right or or, or not fair. Um, don't don't hold your tongue. Like you know, make make noise. Remember the power of the pen. Writing is really an important, powerful way for people to um, to know what's going on inside your mind and to share with with other people. And so, um, you know, those are all awesome things that I would always recommend to to people, especially young people. Though you know, young people who who uh, you know, I was really happy to hear the other day that my niece, who's 14 years old, she's been doing a ton of phone banking recently, and I'm going to have a conversation with her um, this weekend to to make sure that um, I talk to her about the fact that, you know, it doesn't end on November 3rd on election day. Keep, mm -hmm. keep doing this and, and keep, keep driving through. Yeah. We need to do all this to make sure that the house, the American house, the global house yeah. is in order, as you would say. Right. Um, um, it's an amazing film. I encourage everyone to check it out. Um, Thank you. You can find it on all the streaming services, right? On, on, on the TVOD providers, also on CNN films. Tell us yeah, where you it can be. It could be rented on, you know, Amazon, iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, wherever you can rent films. And then um, it was recently broadcast on CNN. They might be broadcasting one or two more times. Ultimately, it'll live uh, in terms of SVOD, the streaming sites. It'll live on HBO Max, uh, and that probably begins in November, I believe. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, also, um, tell us more about what you're working on um, away from this project. I know this project's probably so. Uh, all consuming it has been, but you have a couple of great projects in the pipeline. Tell us about them. Yeah, thank you. Um, no, we're really excited about a bunch of things we're working on. Um, I know you had Whitney Dow on as a guest a couple weeks ago. Uh, so we're producing a documentary film uh, along with Whitney and also um, his partner, Zan Parker. We're producing a film on reparations. 
And um, my partner, Erica Alexander, who's a black woman, is co-directing it with Whitney Dow, who's a white man. So there's this sort of dual perspectives, um, shared creative control dynamic that's been really powerful. And we're really excited about that. That's a documentary film. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to release it sometime in 2021. And um, we also have, you know, we at Color Farm, we produce scripted and unscripted content for film, TV, and podcasts. So we have some podcasts that we're doing at Spotify. We have a, um, a scripted sci-fi fictional podcast. And we have a ton of exciting um, scripted TV series that we're starting to take out to market that hopefully you'll see some of them on air and, you know, ho hopefully 2021 and beyond. Awesome. Well, let's get your... Um... Let's get your links up here on the on the crawl so people can find you on social media and also there it is colorfarmmedia dot com yeah. and bid on on photo because you're a a photo man man of the I camera am, uh, yeah yeah I love photography I love um yeah I, I guess my style is more documentary photography but um it's not something I've been able to do that much recently but I I you know I just love telling visual stories and so yeah Ben Arn on photo dot com is where I sort of house house some of that it's more of a hobby but 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 i really love it cool we're all about pursuing hobbies here following yeah. your curiosities and turning your dreams into amazing projects like you have uh you're a wonderful multi-hyphenate person uh succeeding on many fronts congratulations on all your success i'm excited to see your next venture thank you i really appreciate it uh of course. This is a, great, a great series thanks for having me on here my pleasure and that's been our non everyone check them out online that's our show tonight Obviously, you can stay tuned to my social media to learn who will be next, who will be featuring on the series, and make sure to take care of the art, because the art will always take care of you.